at the heart of Nigeria's energy transition plan is funding. Massive funding. The government says successful results would require $1.9 trillion in expenditure until 2060. That roughly translates to around $10 billion a year. The plan, launched in 2015 and updated in 2022, is focused on reducing emissions across five prominent areas. Power, cooking, oil and gas, transport and industry, while moving towards cleaner energy. The REA, Rural Electrification Agency, they are carrying out a lot of um, projects um, you know, around the country, uh, which is a part of the uh, mitigation activities in trying to reduce the effect of um, climate change and planning towards achieving the targets and uh, also bringing um, the, uh, the investments that will enable us you know, um, achieve that. The government has launched several initiatives as part of its program. Vehicles are switching to the use of compressed natural gas through a program known as a presidential CNG initiative. Investment in renewable energy in the country is growing, but the government and the private sector are investing substantially in renewable and cleaner energy. There are efforts at trying to, um, one, decentralize the power distribution system and also strengthen um, the um, distribution um, um, grid, and that is ongoing as well. Despite the progress, Nigeria still faces a significant funding gap in its energy transition plan. Experts say the country has only been able to mobilize just under $2 billion of the $10 billion it needs annually to meet its targets. Institutional coordination is an issue. Then deliberate government investments are uh, how governments attempt to de-risk investments uh, is another issue. Um, overall, economic outlook of the nation, how many persons are comfortable how many external stakeholders, external investors, wants to invest in, uh, in Nigeria, for instance. Nigeria aims to provide clean cooking access to the bulk of the population using liquefied petroleum gas, biofuels like ethanol, and electric cook stoves by 2030. But the current gas adoption level in the country is nowhere near that. If Nigeria, for instance, can invest in gas pipelines for flowing into homes, flow into homes, these kind of things, um, the adoption of gas will be very easy. Everybody wants to go into gas. But let's also look at the economics. I've looked at the policy arrangement, I've looked at the institutional arrangement. Let's look at the economics. Now, the woman who has been cooking with almost free or low-cost firewood, now, those women wants to change to, to transition to using gas, indeed, many of them. But the issue is, can they afford it? Recently, the price of gas in Nigeria skyrocketed. A core part of the energy transition plan is to end gas flaring by 2030. But the numbers are not decreasing. Communities in oil producing areas continue to bear the brunt of routine flaring. The gas flaring has been going on for decades, nonstop, in many of the communities. You see very gigantic gas flaring burning day and night with terrific noise and, of course, releasing all kinds of noxious, toxic elements into the atmosphere. The fish that survives in the water, the water, the creeks, the rivers, the streams, are already very contaminated species also. Nigeria has an abundance of gas reserves. The government is hoping that with the removal of long-term subsidies, investments will pour into its oil and gas industry and help the country achieve its energy transition targets. DG Badimosi, CGTN. Lagos, Nigeria.